practical advice for the page purification or gel extraction of DNA or RNA using the crush and soak method, where basically what you do is you use gel electrophoresis to separate DNA and RNA fragments by their size. Then you look and see and find the bands that you corresponding to those pieces that you want. You cut them out, but they're stuck in the gel. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna crush up that gel. You're going to then add extraction buffer. So this liquid that's going to make it so that there's a place for the nucleic acids to swim out of the gel and into, they're going to diffuse out and then you can isolate them. I've talked about the theory of this in the past. Today, I wanna to tell you more about how we do it in practice and show you a little demo. I like to start by transferring my gel. So take it on the saran wrap that you're staining it on. More on that in another post. Stick it on the tray um, and get an image this way. This is going to allow you to save a picture of it. It's nicer than like a phone shot. Um, and it's also going to make it so that you have, you can get like a printout that's gonna make it easier to locate things when you're working on the gel, the UV tray. Um, and so you can also use a blue tray if your lab has one of those, which is better because it's gonna be less harmful for the nucleic acid and for you. But if you're using a UV tray, you're gonna want to minimize the exposure to UV, both to your sample, which can harm it, as well as to yourself. Um, and so having that little printout is gonna be helpful to help you locate which bands you want to cut out. When you're cutting out these bands, you want to cut out as close as you can around the edges of the band. Make sure that you're using a clean razor for each of these samples um, because you want to minimize contamination. So you can also, to minimize contamination, you want to skip lanes in between your different samples. If you're having, if you have like duplicates, sometimes you might put these next to each other, but if you have um, unique samples, you definitely want to space them apart. Not only because when you're cutting out, you might get a little of one of them kind of in your other sample, but also when you're loading, you might have a little spillover into the lane next to you. And so you want to make sure that your really unique ones, you want to make sure that they're going to be separated out and you're not going to have contamination between your different samples. And ideally you'll have lanes um, spaced out in between all of them. Make sure that you have a ladder or some other size marker if you're trying to cut out something of a specific size, maybe like a control product, that you have a known size and then you cut out the bands of yours that match that. And again, you wanna make sure that you're cutting right around the edges, minimize the amount of gel, the amount of work we're gonna have to do to then get rid of all that gel. Depending on the size of your gel piece, you might have something really small um, and you want to make sure that you don't lose any of it. Because remember your nucleic acid that you're trying to get is out of there. So take your slice from the razor and stick it into a nuclease free tube. Um, and so you want to make sure you, everything you're using is nuclease free so you don't have any of those DNA or RNA chewers. Now take a nuclease free sterile tip and what you wanna do is basically try to get your gel to the bottom of the tube. And now what you're gonna do is use the sides of the pipette tip to crush the gel. So push against the side of the tube and this is gonna crush the gel up. You don't wanna use the tip of the pipette um, tip because then it has that little hole and so you can get gel stuck in there. Instead, you just wanna crush against the sides. You're gonna to have to apply a lot of pressure. You wanna get these small pieces. It's gonna be more surface area for your nucleic acids to escape out of. But the smaller the pieces also, the more likely it's kinda of gonna get stuck on the outside of your tip. So you don't wanna just pull out like that. Instead, what I like to do is I like to kind of spin the tip as I pull out with putting pressure on the wall and watching to make sure to make sure that that stuff is not, is coming off of my tip and onto the sides of the wall. You might need to do this a few times, making sure that it's all coming off of there and it's not coming off with your tip. Get as much of it off as possible. Again, you might have to do this a couple times if there's stuff stuck on the side of your tip, but you wanna make sure that you're getting it all out. Now what you wanna do is you're gonna add your gel extraction buffer. So you'll have a different one depending if you're doing like an RNA or you're doing a DNA. Um, so you might have different ones for each um, and also depending on what your next step is. Typically you're gonna be adding about like 400 microliters or so for a gel piece this size. Again, look at the protocol. Um, what I like to do is when I add it, I kind of like pour it, put it down the edge decide so you're making sure that all of the stuff is going to get down and nothing is stuck up here where when you then close it it's going to kind of like come off or it gets stuck out okay so cap your tube um and now i kind of like invert it to make sure i get everything off the walls i give it a quick spin down in the pulse cent micro pulse centrifuge um just to make sure that i get everything off the cap and stuff before i go and freeze it so i just stick this on dry ice for about half an hour 
if you need to you can do it um like say you have a meeting you can leave it on dry ice in the meeting if you have to if you can't do it till the next the rest of the next day if you don't have half an hour you can just basically put it in the minus 80 freezer um and then deal with it later um but 30 minutes is good and now what you're going to do is it's frozen you're going to want to thaw it overnight on the over end uh, rotator or some other sort of like gentle rotating thing um, and this is going what's going to happen is that the gel is going to unfreeze it's going to thaw basically when it froze there was water and stuff like that that was expanding inside of this gel because ice ex water expands when it freezes and that's going to break open the gel make it easier for your nucleic acids to come out they're going to have diffused out in this large volume that you have and now they're going to be out and you need to separate your gel um your rna or your dna that's in the liquid from all those gel pieces before you then go and try to precipitate your nucleic acid um such as with uh, salt or uh, salt and alcohol um treatments so basically what I'm going to do is what I like to do is I like to use one of these Spinex filters. There are other options too. You can just like spin it down and then remove the liquid and then spin it like spin down, make sure you're removing all the liquid. I find that these are easy to use. These are basically these little spin filters. Um, and make sure you're using something like cellulose acetate or something else that doesn't bind to nucleic acids. Don't want to use like nylon or something like that, which will bind. What these are is basically they have these little like buckets and they have this membrane on the bottom and this membrane is going to basically filter out all of those gel pieces um, and leave your let the solute your nucleic acids containing solution flow through. So what you want to do is you want to pipette all of your sample into the um, into the bucket and then centrifuge it and then your sample will get pulled through the gel bits will get stuck and then you can go and precipitate your nucleic acids with whatever method you normally use for that now you can't just use your normal pipette tip in order to pipette out this because there's going to be all that gel stuff it's just going to clog this up right away instead what you want to do is you want to cut the tip off of one of these so you can just use a clean razor blade um what i find is easiest is if you might have like a petri dish or something you can cut it on um cut the tip off so you have a wider tip, and this way you can get up those gel bits. If you want, what you can do is you can first do the wider tip and then do a smaller tip to get um, the stuff that's left over, the liquid that's left over. Our goal is to get as much of the liquid as possible into the bucket, even if that means getting the gel bits in. And so we're gonna plan to get the gel bits in. Um, so I take the, normally I have a lot of gel samples at once, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut all the tips that I need, and I just like stick them back in the box, which is going to make it easier to grab up. Um, and just make sure you know which ones are the ones that you've cut already, and you use those. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that tip that I've cut, and basically what I want to do is I'm going to take that thawed sample, give it a quick little pulse down to make sure I get everything down off the walls and the lid because it's been going over over end. Um, and now I want to basically resuspend all those gel bits, which is going to make it easier to pipette up. So I pipette up a little, um, and then I kind of go up and down. This is going to resuspend the gel. So as you might have a little gel piece get stuck, um, resist the urge to just like pull really tight. You want to make sure that you're not going to have sample jumping up the sides of the tube. Pipette tip gets clogged with like a piece of gel stuck on the end. Don't try to just like suck up. Instead, pipette it out and then pipette back and forth um, so that you can now pipette up normally or else what's gonna happen is the liquid, there's gonna get like a gap and it's just gonna jump up. Um, so I like to pull it all up. You wanna set your pipette for a larger volume than what you used before. Um, and basically what you're gonna do is you wanna get as much as you, I like to get as much as I can the first time and then take a little bit of the liquid now make sure you try not to get more gel bits in here because what you want to do is you want to use the liquid to kind of get the last of the sample that's left in here and again try to get as much as possible um, remember we're trying to get as much as the liquid as possible and someone that's going to be trapped in this like gel on the sides um, and then you want to pipette it in now this time it worked pretty well but sometimes you might get something you might get a drop stuck on the side of the tube what you want to do here is basically take your really carefully with your thumb held down before you go in now slowly um, release your thumb pull up a little bit of the liquid till you reach that drop on the side of the tube and then use that to kind of like carry it back down with all of this you want to go really really slowly so that you're not getting stuff jumping up the sides of the tip which is going to be hard to get out some of the gel extraction buffers are going to be more prone to this um, than other ones and now you've got your sample all 
in here, what you wanna do is you want to centrifuge it. So typically I do like a minute centrifuge. This is gonna pull the liquid through. The gel bits are gonna get trapped in this bucket. And then I'm going to be able to move on to my next step. So typically my next step will be I'll add glyco blue, a co-precipitant. Um, and then I'm going to add like ethanol, which is going to allow the nucleic acids to precipitate out. And then I can purify out the pellet. Um, but the first step was this crush and soak and hope this helped you understand how to do it.